video will attempt to use functionalism to analyze the myths that involve members of the House of Atreus. The story begins with Tantalus, who chopped up his own son Pelops and served him to the gods for dinner. The gods caught on to Tantalus's trickery and banished him to the underworld where he must endure eternal hunger and thirst while standing in a pool of water that recedes when he bends down to drink it and with fruits over his head that he can never reach either. One might think the ancient people used the story of Tantalus to rationalize the divine omniscience of the gods, evident because Tantalus fails to prove the gods' foolishness and faces punishment. After Pelops is brought back to life by the gods, he grows up and wishes to marry the princess Hippodamia. However, her father, the king, was set on defeating all of her suitors in a chariot race and then killing them. Before the race, Pelops tampered with the king's chariot. Then he won the race, killed the king, married Hippodamia, and took over the kingdom, naming it Peloponnesia. Perhaps this myth reveals a social norm of protecting one's daughter because the king was so set on keeping suitors away from Hippodamia. The curse on the house of Atreus, originating from Tantalus's actions, caused much turmoil for later generations. Both Atreus and Thyestes wanted to be king. I want to be king. I want to be king. I want to be king. Thyestes proposed that whoever had the best sheep could be king, and Atreus readily agreed because he secretly owned a golden sheep. Here, you see Atreus with his wife, Aero, and he is sure he will win the contest with his golden sheep. However, Aero helped Thyestes to steal the golden sheep. The day of the contest came, and Thyestes won the kingship. Atreus still wanted to be king and proposed that if the sun rose in the west, then he should be king. Then Atreus made a deal with Zeus to make sure the sun would rise in the east. The sun rose in the east, Atreus won the kingship again and banished Thyestes. Then Atreus found out Thyestes and Aerope had had an affair. To get revenge, Atreus invited Thyestes back to the kingdom for a feast, but carved up all of Thyestes' children and served them to him for dinner. The oracle told Thyestes that the only way to get revenge on Atreus was for Thyestes to have a son by his own daughter. Thyestes thinks this is an awful prophecy, but when he is drunk in the woods, he impregnates Pelopia, his daughter. Pelopia names the son Aegisthus, and Atreus thinks it's his own child. Atreus raises Aegisthus with his other sons, Menelaus and Agamemnon. One day, Atreus sends his sons out to drag Thyestes back to the kingdom. Atreus orders Aegisthus to kill Thyestes, and just as he is about to, Thyestes recognizes Aegisthus' sword, which he had given to him as a baby. Pelopia reveals that Aegisthus is really the son of Thyestes and kills herself with the sword. Aegisthus and Thyestes reunite as father and son. Thyestes and Aegisthus team up to kill Atreus, and Thyestes is king again. A main theme of Atreus and Thyestes' relationship is betrayal, so perhaps one may conclude that this myth serves the function of condemning disloyalty between family members. When Thyestes became king, he banished Agamemnon and Menelaus from the kingdom. Agamemnon went on to marry Clytemnestra, but she did not like him very much. Then, Agamemnon and Menelaus went off to fight the Trojan War, which also made Clytemnestra angry. In addition, Agamemnon sacrificed their daughter Iphigenia at sea, which made Clytemnestra even more angry. So Clytemnestra took on Aegisthus as her lover because he was Agamemnon's most hated enemy. Then, when Agamemnon came back from the Trojan War with Cassandra, his new second wife, Clytemnestra was extremely angry. Clytemnestra killed both Agamemnon and Cassandra. Electra and Orestes decided that they should avenge Agamemnon, their father, by killing their mother, Clytemnestra. So Orestes killed both Clytemnestra, his mother, and Aegisthus, her lover. Because he committed matricide, Orestes was punished by the Furies, whose job it was to punish criminals. Athena defended Orestes in a court before the gods. When one analyzes this myth through functionalism, they might find that it legitimizes the social norm of a son avenging his father's death because Orestes decides to kill his own mother when she murders his father.